Right, folks, we're at our workshop. Just had uh, the five hour journey today. Either, either Land Cruiser or Land Rover. It's this beautiful part of Africa. It's so remote. We had uh, quite a long drive off road. It gave me a lot of thinking time, uh, essentially, about the differences between Land Rovers and Land Cruisers in terms of their fixability and also what they're like when they crash. Um, as a Land Rover we got written off a couple of weeks ago here and it's kind of made me think about a few things. Um, they've been kind of brewing for a while. Um, kind of the paradox of, of a Defender being easy to fix. And I've got this theory which is, and I'm interested to, if you just say in the comments whether you think this is valid or not. I've got this theory that because Land Rovers are pretty easy to fix, your panels are all bolt on and off the ball. So when a, when a Defender crashes, there's an expectation that you can fix it. Therefore, if a newer Defender crashed, then the, the parts could be replaced and the vehicle would go back on the road. Whereas if a Land Cruiser crashed, let's say a four-year-old vehicle crashed, the body's not as forgiving because it's all made with robots and what have you. It would essentially more easily get written off in terms of bodywork damage. And then that vehicle would then go to the scrap heap and you'd get a whole load of whole load of parts from that vehicle that were relatively brand new. And uh, it would kind of build up the stock of parts available for Land Cruisers. So... With the Defenders, you essentially, the new vehicles go back on the road and they live out their useful lives and they, they essentially you end up with wrecked vehicles with no spare parts available. Whereas Land Cruisers, I mean, just from my personal experience, it may be because there's so many more Land Cruisers in Africa, but, but, vehicle, but Land Cruiser parts are so easy to come by because scrapyards are full of them because they'll get written off. So there's this kind of this paradox where... where Land Rovers are supposed to be more easy to fix, yet there's not the parts available. Um, the parts available, it relies on the supply chain, basically, as opposed to being able to cannibalise other vehicles. You can cannibalise other vehicles, but... There's, there's another element to this, which is the fact that Land Rovers just get so utterly destroyed by this terrain. I mean, it was very stark for me, looking at this on the journeys we had today. The Land Rovers were rattly and noisy and... It's just an epic bone jarring journey, whereas the, the, the Land Cruisers are so much, they're a lot more comfortable actually. This was a 76, so not, lo not the longest wheelbase that they have. So you get a Land Rover that's done 20 years, it is absolutely wrecked. Whereas a Land Cruiser, in this environment, doesn't get shaken to pieces, so it's in a lot better condition. So even if it does get scrapped at 20 years old, you've probably got some better parts, and they're more reliable, they're made more durably, so there's a lot more parts available that you could cannibalise onto other vehicles. Yeah, interesting concept. But there's another thing as well, which is kind of to do with crashing. Um, there's somewhat of an element that, I mean, all utility vehicles are likely to crash because they're pretty top-heavy, but a Land Cruiser... You can drive it faster because it's kind of more comfortable and it doesn't shake around so much. So you're more likely potentially to drive at high speeds and therefore crash. Whereas a Defender, I mean, the Defender being driven today was driving a lot slower because it was such a, a banging, clattering, noisy experience that you just had to drive slower. Although it tends to be that a lot of the crashes that happen don't tend to happen off road so much. It tends to be tarmac where speeds are a lot higher. So. So, uh, it's just this kind of this situation where Land Cruisers may be more easily crashed and then when they do, there's a more biggest pile of spare parts available and, and it goes into the pool to help keep all the fleets running and available. And really it's kind of seen as one of the demises of the Defenders in Africa because you cannot get new Defender body parts anymore. Uh, 
they're just it's just uneconomical a new body for a defender even though you could replace all the body panels it's going to cost you know you price it up from Landro at 25 grand so it's really hastening the demise of defenders because there's no body shells available because those vehicles never crashed those body shells didn't go into the scrapyards and become available to be cannibalized the ones that are nearing the end of their life are just wrecked the bodies are utterly wrecked so really the, the writings on the wall and it has been for a long time with defenders because I mean the writing's been on the wall really 14 years now since the 300 TDI ended but really I'm writing on the wall, on the wall since production finished in, uh, five years ago uh, here's one coming now in fact so really I mean it's just the, the Land, Land Rovers are, are on their way out and uh, we'll be interested to see what happens with the Grenadier yeah so that was just some interesting thoughts there as the sun sets on my time in this beautiful part of the world be interested to know what your thoughts are on the demise of Land Rover what some of your experiences have been Maybe in this part of the world, if you've been to Africa before and have any experience with Land Rovers or Land Cruisers. It's something I've been thinking about for a number of years, so maybe it's not fully formed, but oh man, just look at this. This sunset is going to be awesome. Mm. It's been a privilege and an honour to see Land Rovers at home in their natural habitat. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.